Welcome to the ATCM, the Emergency Medicine channel. Today I will be briefing you about dexamethasone. So as we all of you know, dexamethasone is a corticosteroid. Basically what is it? It is a glucocorticoid. So the class of drug is glucocorticoid. Dexamethasone is a glucocorticoid. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics. And before we dealing with the um, pharmacokinetics, glucocorticoid dexamethasone has what properties? It has an anti-inflammatory and an immunosuppressant property. So basically it is anti-inflammatory and it has also got an immunosuppressant activity. Now coming to the pharmacokinetics about the absorption. So if you are giving the glucocorticoid that is the dexamethasone, it has a well good absorption. And coming to the distribution part, it will get distributed all over the body. And coming to the metabolism, it is metabolized in the liver by CYP3A4. In liver by CYP3A4. And coming to the bioavailability, if you are taking it as an orally, then the bioavailability is 70 to 80 percent. And coming to the excretion, it gets excreted via urine. So this is the pharmacokinetics of the dexamethasone. Now coming to the mechanism of action, it is a long, as I have already told, it is a long acting corticosteroid with minimum sodium retention potential. And it also, what all properties it has, it reduces the production of the inflammatory markers and also it suppresses the immune cell activity. So it has got an anti-inflammatory and an immunosuppressant property. Along with that, it is a, a glucocorticoid with minimal sodium retaining potential, with minimum sodium retaining potential. Now coming to the uses. So as we can see, the main indications where we give dexamethasone is, one is in case of inflammatory conditions, inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis and SLE. So these cases all you give dexamethasone, osteoarthritis, SLE, these are the main inflammatory conditions. Then in case of allergic reactions, you know, so in case of any contact dermatitis, Then in case of uh, anaphylaxis also, you can give. So in case of allergic reactions, we give dexamethasone. Then in case of endocrine diseases, such as where there is an adrenal insufficiency, that is the Cushing's disease. You have Cushing's or where there is adrenal insufficiency, then there you give the dexamethasone. Then in cases of respiratory diseases such as when there is an acute exacerbation of uh, bronchial asthma, when there is acute exacerbation of COPD, in those conditions also we will give dexamethasone. Then the what are the other indications like cerebral edema, when, uh, post traumatic or post surgery, if the patient is having a cerebral edema, then you can give the dexamethasone. In cases of post operative swellings, then in case of carcinomas as an adjuvant therapy you will be giving as an adjuvant therapy mainly in uh, which all conditions in leukemias lymphomas in all these conditions you will be giving dexamethasone so these are the main indications so in case of uh, inflammatory conditions allergic reactions endocrine diseases respiratory events then cerebral edema post operative swelling carcinomas all these cases will be giving dexamethasone now coming to the dosing, so in dosing when the patient comes with an acute respiratory distress, when it is moderate to severe type, then we are going to give 20 mg IV for 5 days, following that we will be tapering it into 10 mg OD for next 5 days. So here 20 mg OD for first 5 days, followed by we will be tapering it into 10 mg OD for the next five days okay so that is in case of acute respiratory distress now if the patient is coming with adrenal crisis then you you are going to give 4 to 6 mg daily your dose will be 4 to 6 mg daily you will be giving in adrenal crisis if it is a chronic event 
then these are given as what IV dosages. So if you are given, it is a going to be a chronic, then orally you will be giving, in case of chronic condition, orally you will be giving 0.5 mg OD, 0 0.5 mg OD you will be giving. So this is the oral dose in case of chronic. Now if the patient is having meningitis, there also we give DEXA. So uh, it is always advised to give before the antibiotics at least within one hour of administration of antibiotics. So because you know that if it is caused by a capsulated organism, once you give the antibiotics, what happens? There will be release of toxins. So for that to avoid this inflammatory response, we will be giving DEXA. And in case of de uh, meningitis, the dose will be what? You will be giving 0.15 mg per kg per dose or you will be giving like uh, 10 mg IV Q8H. So here the dose is 0.15 mg per kg that will be your dose. Now next coming to what your cerebral edema. So here what you will be giving first initially you will be giving 10 mg stat. 10 mg bolus dose will be given followed by bolus followed by 4 mg. 4 mg can be given for the patient every Q6H. Q6H. So that is the next dose. In case of cerebral edema 10 mg followed by 4 mg Q6H. Then coming to the fetal lung maturation, you know that when there is a preterm baby, when the uh, uh, baby is of uh, 24 to 34 weeks, we prefer giving steroids. So in the, that case what will be giving, you will be giving 6 mg, your dosage will be 6 mg Q12H, Q12H and maximum up to 4 doses you will be giving, 4 doses, 6 mg Q12H maximum up to 4 doses. Now if the, uh, these are in the cases of adult, so if, the, if it is a child, if it is a pediatric, then you have some dose changes, it will be according to your weight. So in case of inflammatory condition, it will be around 0.02 to 0.3 mg per kg per day, 0.02 to 0.3 mg per kg per day, that is in case of your inflammatory condition. Now if it is uh, cerebral edema, then you will be giving what 0.15 mg per kg, 0.15 mg per kg bolus you will give initially and following that you will be giving 0 0.05 mg per kg. So that will be 0 0.05 mg per kg every Q6H you will be given, every Q6H you will be given. And if it is in the case of allergic reaction, then it will be 0.03 to 0.1 mg per kg per day. 0.1 mg per kg per day. Per kg per day. So these are the doses in case of the pediatric group. So these are the doses. Now coming to what? Next one is the warnings. So when you give dexamethasone, what are the warnings? So here in GI peptic disease, so if there is some GI peptic disease, you have want, you cannot give because it will flare up your peptic disease. So in case of GI peptic disease, in case of hepatic or renal impairment because you know it gets metabolized in your liver. So in case of hepatic or renal impairment, in case of myasthenia gravitus. We have seen that it can worsen the myasthenia gravis. Then in case of any CAD because why this can cause fluid retention. So here in these cases you have to be cautious when you give. So when the patient is having a GI peptic disease, hepatic renal impairment, myasthenia gravis and any CAD you have to be cautious enough. Now where is it contraindicated as we know if there is some hypersensitivity to the drug it is completely contraindicated hypersensitivity then if it if there is an active peptic disease if there is a uh, advanced glaucoma if there is cushion syndrome all these are contraindicated so if there is an active peptic disease glaucoma if there is glaucoma if there is cushings all these what happens 
this drug is contraindicated now we will go to the adverse effects so coming to the adverse effects now if you take the endocrine system so first we will be taking of the endocrine so in endocrine what is the main complication it will be it will be causing cushion syndrome then it can cause hyperglycemia and then it can also cause impaired glucose tolerance so cushion syndrome hyperglycemia and impaired glucose tolerance coming to the gi sim problems what will happen it can cause peptic ulcers they can be gastrointestinal bleeding pancreatitis all these can cause in the gi then coming to the musculoskeletal in musculoskeletal what happens this steroids can cause osteoporosis there can be muscle weakness and they can be also delayed wound healing then coming to the cvs in cvs as we have already told it can cause fluid retention it can cause hypertension it can cause electrolyte imbalance because why it can cause precipitate hypokalemia so in cvs they can be fluid retention hypertension and electrolyte imbalance coming to the immune system in immune system what is going to happen there can be increased susceptibility in the patients for having infections because why the immune response is suppressed so immune system will come down then other than that what has the adverse effect psychiatric changes in psychiatry what happens these steroids can cause mood swings insomnia depression all those kinds can happen so these are the main adverse effects of the dexamethasone so hope all of you have got a brief idea about dexamethasone thank you